All right, thanks, Nox, for the instrument. Pleasure. Or, I'm sure you, you know, enjoyed this. Um, a cappella. My music skills are, my musical skills are just through the roof today. I'm feeling so, so musical. That being said, welcome back, guys, to Starlighter and Eile Star Series Season 3. Last chance qualifier. We're going onwards to the second to last match of the day, as the next match will determine who faces off against Zale in the finals of the last chance. Again, these guys are fighting for the last spot in the live event in Kiev between the 9th and 11th of June that is coming right up actually within about 10 days. So there's a lot at stake for these players. Tyus lost his away earlier and has a chance to climb back up to face against him again and perhaps get his revenge kill. In the meantime, 6-0 uh, has been climbing back from the loser's bracket, lost to Zolay, and then beat Calento, has a chance to beat Tyus and then fight off against Zolay once more. So Zolay, no matter what's going to happen here, is going to face off against one of the guys that he knocked out already down to the loser's bracket. So this just uh, goes to show the strength of Zolay's lineup. It's funny because Zolay, I believe, had a 5-2 score in the group stage. Yeah, he did, um, but he was kind of unlocking those matches. Right, but he had a 5-2 score in the round robin and still ended up having to make it to the last chance. So this was one of these worst-case scenarios where you have an amazing score in the, the round robin, but you still end up having to go through the same hurdles that some players at 3-4, and four, for instance, um, have to go through. Um, so Tyus, in this case, while having a, a decently strong score in, in his group, did not really have anywhere near the uh, the results that Zale did. So Zale extremely favored, I think, just going into this lineup-wise and whatnot. And 6-0, even in this matchup, also has the edge over Tice. Tice's lineup just seems not to do extremely well against the these aggro decks. Yeah, I would, I would say the same. And Tice is not looking great coming into this match. This might be the end of the run, and yet it was a really long run. Uh, the lineup that he brought is really weak to aggro decks. And... <sighs> If that rogue doesn't get like a really insane draw and just you know finish a quest on turn four or five, it's not looking great. It's definitely not looking great. So six on the aggro druid, on the secret mage, and on the mid range paladin with wild pyromancers. We've seen this deck. We've been breathing it for the past two weeks. Tice on J Druid, on the Quest Rogue, and on the Discover Mage slash Burn Mage slash Psygunther's Mage. Call it what you want. This is the uh, value generating mage that finds openers and burns your face down with Alex Straza. Now, Sixo's got an interesting twist on the, the mage deck. His secret mage is running Mediv, which is not something you typically see in there. Mediv is more of a card you will find in those discover mages, but Sixo's secret mage, which is extremely tempo-oriented, is still running Mediv for this, like the extra value you can find off of stuff like Firelands Portal. So it's got the ability to go a little bit later in the game than some of those other secret mage decks that rely on the blowout openers and sometimes can't close it out. Yeah, it's an interesting addition, and as you said, it's just an additional fuel tank in the deck, just like that, by one card, right? There's, uh, we had seen in the past similar, let's say, usage of a card, and that was the Antonidas, that gave just another fireball, but required, um, you know, whatever else spell you have, and it has to be played most likely in the same turn. Medivh's Mediv has this um, upside that it doesn't require to be played in, within the same turn with other spells. So you just jam it, and you have the Sindri still, even if he you know, vanishes from the board. And it's still mo way more powerful than, than Antonidas, because it's a 7-7 seven, seven minion instead of 5-7. So it makes a difference as well. Uh, not going to come in handy too much this time around. 6-0 on the Murloc Paladin. This is a mid-range list, by the way. It's not a Murloc Paladin. That... I like how the difference between a Murloc Paladin and a mid-range Paladin is like, do you run 6 drops, six one drops, or 4 one drops? So 6-0 is running the 4 um, with the Tide Callers and the Vilefin Inquisitors. Still can, you know, create some blowout potential. Tyson's hand is, is missing an enabler for all these bouncers, man. He, he that's, can. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> he's just missing something, you know, to, to make this hand useful. And 6-0 has a sick aggro hand. That's what he needs, though. So it's not looking great for Tice. What, what do you think about Megasaur? opening with the Inquisitor instead of the Tide Caller? What do you think about that? He was playing around. Oh, backstage, I see. Right? Um, 
Well, there's always the case of the, the rogue going coin dagger up to kill your guy, right? But you have rock pool hunter in hand already to play around it. And I guess that's the, the big issue. Man, the baby's crying in the back. This guy's uh, yeah. yelling his, his lungs out. So, yeah, I guess maybe the there was an argument to just get the max damage output on the um, the tide caller. If there's backstab, though, in Tyson's deck and Sixa would know it, he'd be able to tell you um, whether or not this is preferable. Because you would you might see the backstab played anyway, although I, I'm not sure that would necessarily be the case. But if the opponent is playing around Rockpool Hunter, so if you go Inquisitor first and they're playing around Rockpool Hunter, they have to backstab first to set up a kill on it. Otherwise, the Rockpool Hunter puts it out of range, so if you attack first, you no longer can backstab. Yeah, but so look it's at really this. just a matter of the backstab play. Ties did actually get double shadow steps from his Mimic pot, so what he can do is actually pull off the quest by <laughs> bouncing the ferryman. Yeah, it can be done. It can be done. The, the ferryman can do it on their own. They can just yes. bounce each other. That's that's pretty sick, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, you have to go for it. You have no other choice. But the question is, when do you go for it? So you have to sacrifice two mana at some point in the game. And I would say that this is the turn. So if you play Ferryman this turn, you Shadow Step it. Yeah. For next turn, you'll have Ferryman for zero, Shadow Step, Ferryman for two, or Brewmaster. Oh, no, no, Shadow, you need to play the, the, the Ferryman. Ferryman for the quest, yes. And then you complete the quest and you, and you play Preparation Quest. Hey, you can even prep it out. The problem is none of the guys you play are going to stick around as long as you keep playing stuff behind them because you keep bouncing them. So you're, you're not generating any kind of board presence. What you're doing right. is just putting guys that just bounce themselves back in your hand, which I think right now is hilarious. Just looking at this amuses me. Tyus's hand is one of the weirdest hands I've ever seen for this type of deck. Oh my god, look at this board, it's so wide. Sixo's got Megasaurs in the deck, War Leaders. Those will simply tear up. Tyus, he's almost dead. Tyus is almost dead. This deckhand will kill the tight core, and that's what's needed right now. I was gonna feel bad because you basically skip your turn by doing this. Do you see any other way of surviving this game? Do I don't think so. No, I think this is your line. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you could go for deck hand into patches, and then you start bouncing patches with shadow step and youthful. So you can technically just. Oh no, patches. Yeah, you'd have to keep the patches in hand after the last bounce, but that would slow you down too much. Hmm. Yeah, you probably have to dagger trade and then get that patches out there, if you want to get the the kill on the, on the five three. Drink with me, friend. Yep. He's gonna try to complete the quest with the brewmaster. Same idea as earlier. Uh. <laughs> That's so awkward. Funny. At least he gets five fives with the South Sea deck hand next turn, right? So these are gonna be very important for Tice. Because that quest is getting completed <laughs> for well, is it getting completed? Uh, when Fury Wind Fury or plus three attack makes it. Yeah, we have two choices. We have over 50 50. Over 50% to win. Fury. And that's going to be the lead fill for 6 0. Hey, this is, a, this is a strong opener by 6 0. Doesn't get much better. You think so? It's, it's pretty good. Turn four, turn five lead fills. Feels like the metagame sped up over uh, what we used to, to look at. Early on Goro, people were playing Priest and Dragon Priest and Miracle Priest. And then they said, we don't win fast enough, we're switching to Purify Priest to kill you on turn 5, because everybody is killing us on turn 5, and even Paladins are joining the troop now. Even they're turning to the wild, uh, evil side. Wild thing. Oh, it's actually standard. Never mind. Yeah, standard was... is actually, is wild faster than standard, by the way? Yeah, I know you've been playing a ton of wild. Uh... You would know. I actually think that standard is faster than wild. Because the thing is that in wild you have a lot of answers available. So even if a deck like Pirate Warrior is the best deck in the metagame and can kill people on turn 4 or 5, there's so many answers in other decks that it can just maintain, you know, getting those answers being played and they postpone the game to like turn 6. But, um, 
Well, I, honestly, I honestly feel that that's wild is slower. Okay, that's uh. If 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 the if the, uh, if the same amount of players would be playing the game, because you know in smaller amount of players, you probably will stick. You'll have still more players playing playing Pyro Warriors than anything else. So it's still a fast meta game because of that, and aggro shamans. But you'd see, you expect like more Reno decks ish. Uh, if uh, if more people were involved, as the, the player base would probably gravitate towards different archetypes. Yeah, most likely okay. would happen. Fair enough. In the meantime, Sixo started the game off in his aggro druid against the Burn Mage, and this is a matchup where, once again, um, you know, Token Druid is you know, capable of getting blowout wins. But it's less capable of it in this matchup than it is against, say, the Rogue. Because the mage is filled with answers. They have the Medis Valley, they've got the Ice Block to stall the big pushes with Savage or Late Game. They've got Frost Bolts to answer cards like Fledgling. They're able to find Glyph cards like Blizzard and Flame Strikes to sometimes clear and reset board states. So... He needs a Frost Bolt right now. Or um, anything that can deal damage for zero mana, basically. That's what Tyze needs to kill that. That fledgling, but that's not gonna happen. Could that gain is... stealth. This guy could gain stealth yeah. after Wind Fury. Sometimes it happens, and this might be big. It's a difficult decision now for Xixo what to do: wait, attack first wait. or buff <laughs> first. Uh, what if vaporize? That's what he's thinking. Secret well, got snap picked, right? But you need to do it anyway. So I don't really. Care here in this situation if it's vaporized, too bad. But it's not. And that means that oh. magic will evolve and it has the wind fury. And oh, it can get man. stealth now. Oh. Stealth! Three health and stealth! Are you kidding me? The guy's got all the good options. You what go is stealth. this? You go for 100% yes. stealth. Of course you do. You make Tice think you don't have the stealth, and then you wait a little bit, give him some suspense. Give him a feeling of security, a false sense of security, trying to I mean, lure him into it. You have a Wind Fury with with stealth, which means that you guarantee yourself, uh, because there's no taunt on 10-4, two additional attacks with adapts. So the next adapt is for four, sorry, the first attack next turn is for four damage. You might get additional damage then, and then also um, another stealth. And he finds a way to dodge that fireball and the Medivh's Valley. That's the crazy part, is that stealth protects you from Medivh's Valley ping, which is extremely uh, powerful against your 4-4 in this specific case. He can still get um, the adapt that um, makes it uh, basically elusive to all uh, spells and hero powers, which is also oh, yeah. pretty great. Because then board control means that Tyus can deal with the fledgling, which he fortunately for himself develops this turn and I really like that because he plays around that uh, option from adapt for Xixo. Man, imagine if Rogue would still have stealth I mean in his deck as a spell. Conceal? Oh yeah. But I really yeah. thought uh, <laughs> well I mean, the games end on turn five so never mind that but I thought Red Mana Worm was a pretty sweet card initially. So um, I guess here, hmm. if you're lucky, you go face, you find wind fear, you find plus three attack, then you swing again, find stealth, set up a savage or a kill. <laughs> In some universes, that's a thing. I was thinking about just savage roaring here first. I mean, it's six sure, damage. Fair enough. fair enough. Count me in. Just from one attack. It's pretty sick. <laughs> Can't be targeted. Divine uh, shield doesn't doesn't really help that much when your opponent has already bored. So but you can take one minion away, right, with your hero, so that's one help. Big deal. Plus three health would be insane or can't be targeted. Uh, Yikes. Yikes, those are pretty horrible. I mean, the, the minion itself would be so much better if he could just pick an adapt that was not... I mean, if the adapt option that he picked before was cancelled out, out of the pool. I, w I might just never play Arena again, to be honest with you, if that were the case. <laughs> Have you played any Arena since this guy was implemented? Not really. Okay, because this guy is basically... <laughs> if, uh, if you want to get to 12 wins, and you have a Fledgling or two, you're probably going there. I see. Uh, th the card is completely bonkers in Arena. It's it's unbelievable. And now the, the, the awkward thing for Tyus 
is if he wants to get rid of this fledgling without committing too much, he'd love to ping Fireball, but he's a little bit of mana off. So the only option is straight away a minion and then Fireball that guy off, which, you know, while you get an okay turn with board control back on your side, um, you're still definitely not winning. You, or at least you haven't won. Triple Ice Block, though. Sixto is going to need some... <laughs> Some work to get through that. Unfortunately, he loses the uh, the vicious fledgling, but at the same time, his opponent didn't really develop his board that much. So now he can do the same: just play fledgling hero power, trade with with the two two. Do you ever power the wild to buff it up? Oh, uh, that's actually better. Oh, really? Uh, it's tough to say because you get a value trade with a one two, which I think is. It's good against Frostbolt, because if he Frostbolts your Fledgling <laughs> and pings it, you keep your little minion on the board. But then you play directly into Fireball Ping. That's also yes. really bad. Uh, unfortunately, his, his hand doesn't allow him to go wide, because he has two free drops. So if you would have any other minion, then one of those free drops he would just go wide and buff, buff the entire board and just go face. Mm -hmm. In this case, he... He goes for the value trade, which I like, but unfortunately he will be met with the fireball ping. Most likely. And that's exactly what Tyce is going to do, but you also have to keep in mind that Sixto is redeveloping onto this without any challenge, you know, ch minions challenging him, so... Barring AoE, he might get a really good redevelop- Like, that Savage Roar is also threatening a lethal pop or, you know, the Ice Block pop at least on the following turn. So Sixo, while he's behind, still has board control, and that's the important part. Yep. Alright, well... He needs to deal with those minions, and he gets a Frostbolt! That's fantastic! He can go for the Sosa's Apprentice, Apprentice and the Frost Nova this turn. Ping a minion if he needs that. Or actually keep the... Okay, makes sense because you can keep the Frost Nova for mana, uh, living mana at him. And that's that basically... Come in handy. Yeah, that, that basically stops your opponent for two turns. Because he can't play more minions. Because either his deck is full, a board is full, or he's just unavailable to spend mana. So that's a decent option. In this case, this is probably the best Savage Roar that Xixo will get in this game anymore. Uh, seeing the Ice Bear is going to break his heart, but I mean, there's not much that you can do about it. There's something you're going to have to go through at some point. So while he's going to have two minions on board for Ty stepping over a few turns, uh, at the very least, that'll slow down Ty. Like, the 2-1 one will connect again. One of them at least will. And Sixo might pick up another War Leader to buff the Blue Gill, or Mark of Yashars to buff the the Raven. So these two minions on their own, just by virtue of their, their tribe, have some value going forward. Hmm. Well, it's still looking good for, for Tice, even though he's on 8 HP. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, that actually protects that's, that's his minion. Awesome. This is so good. Oh. That is awesome because it protects him from the ping, <laughs> but it doesn't protect from the Firelands portal. So that's definitely sure. problematic. Still, I mean... for Sixo to kill Tice, it will take... If he doesn't get a direct damage, I know what it takes. Instantly. I know what it takes. It takes a bomb squad. <laughs> My god. From the Firelands portal. Did Tice get it? Uh, no, no, he got Halazir. It's Hallazir. the exact opposite. <laughs> oh uh, my god, okay. That's we're a good done fire here, Sixo. So but move bomb squad with. would be pretty sick. <laughs> I would have died laughing if bomb squad oh, had really? come out. Oh man. Yeah, Halazil is just gonna do its thing. There's a Pyro Blast coming up for 10 healing on Tyza's side. And uh, that's gonna basically bring him back up. Alex draws a level health while pushing a ton of damage. And Sixo is gonna scoop it up and give it to Tyza. So Sixo is still on the aggro druid, is gonna have to find a win elsewhere. But that rogue on Tyza's side is still there to be exploited. It is yep. still available to, to exploit. That is true. And let's see what Tyza will pick up for the next game because he still has the Jade, um, the Jade Golem. And I guess he can just go for that if he wants to. If he wants to go for a longer game, if not, just stick to the rogue, get it off. If, if it wins, it's fantastic. If it doesn't, well, 
he would have to win with it anyway. Yeah, Tice probably wanted to line up that that mage against a matchup that is favored in a uh, matchup that is that is favored in, as opposed to just jamming it against Secret Mage, uh, where things get a bit awkward because Secret Mage tends to to get on the board a little bit you know quicker than you do if you're the burn mage. So you'd rather not face off against it. So if you queue it up and you run into a good matchup, then that's fantastic. But then you're still down to that quest row. So let's see if Tice can make something happen this turn. He still has Ferryman and Brewmaster in hand for the opener. But this time around also has a South Sea deck hand. So mm -hmm. you're probably throwing these guys at some point. Uh, you know, it's just as, as as fodder to trade. Oh man, that's a really good opener. Having just minions on curve is fantastic. Still need a secret for Secret Mage to work well though. And uh, we've seen a lot of games for 6-0 where that just doesn't happen somehow. Well, he has Mirror Entity. Um, counter spell, ice block, and spellbender. So that's four. On top of that, he's running two arcanologists. So that's six cards that are giving him a secret. Um, and that that will be six out of twenty five right now. Think. So let's see if it picks that up because it will speed up his deck by a huge margin. Although and it would be the suddenly, best. Go ahead. Uh, it would be the best if it's not if it's not counter spelled, because that coin is looming there still. Fireball. We can play on tempo. Awkward. I mean, as long as these minions connect, yeah, it's worth it's something. So That's the important part. Like the chip damage you get from even the Medivh Valley, even if it's not enabled, is still valuable. The issue is when you it comes to cards like Ethereal Arcanist. Now those are completely dead. Because unlike Medivh's Valet, they do suffer a stat loss when they're not enabled. So Medivh's Valet, a 2 mana, 2-3, perfectly reasonable to play on curve, or even slightly off curve against a deck like Quest Rogue. But Ethereal Arcanist is a 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, I mean, that's just, that's just dreadful. So this is why the deck sometimes finds those clunky openers. It's because of Ethereal Arcanist, it's because of Kirin Tor Mage that doesn't find a secret. There are so many spots where that's the case. Um, that, that's why some people elect not to play Secret Mage, while it's still a very good deck overall. Mm -hmm. In this case, Tyus has some form of defense, still. And Xixxo without that synergy with the secrets, he might actually be falling short, because Tyus has the bounces, in his hand has also card draw. He will keep that coin for the counter spell if it actually hits the board. It's super interesting to see how this game develops, but it's it's looking better for Tice actually right now. I I'm not sure if sacrificing the two one was better than throwing away the the dagger and patches and bouncing the South Sea. I tend to agree. Yeah. I'm not sure that was completely optimized. That being said, the Ethereal Arcanist comes down as a four mana three three. On the flip side, there's a mirror I'm... entity and Medivh's Valley for turn five, so you will find some value out of it. Yeah, and to be honest, like your opponent doesn't have a way of killing it anyway, most likely. One deck and it was sacrificed. No backstab. So playing that 3 3 on the board is just good enough. It will get buffed next turn, so that's something. I wonder. Hm. I mean, once it gets to 5 5, though, that's when Tyus can't deal with it until the quest is completed. It becomes way too complicated. Like, there's so much value you have to pitch into it to deal with it. Which is uh, is going to give Sixo a f a really big window of opportunity to finish off that rogue. I mean, this is perfect. He gets the tempo, keeps the board, has a two three and a five five, going to fireball ping ranger. So he's still able to remove uh, or pressure with burn if he wants to set up that route. The only issue is his turn seven's looking clunky for now. You know, with nothing to really do. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna it's gonna turn out. He needs Firelands portal ideally. Or maybe Arcane Little Act, you know, Glyph. So many that things. That would be nice. You like my invention. Well, there's still a lot of options that he can draw, but um, it's getting pretty awkward. So he has, let's say, let's say the Fireball will connect to the face, so that's 18. Next turn, he will deal 7, 8 damage, maybe 9. So that's 9 health left. But Tyze is able to complete the quest next turn. And have still a board that will um, trade with those minions already. 
<laughs> Even high so, shadow stuff, so. So Ty, uh, so sorry, so Xixo might have to sacrifice the ping and the two free attack into a 1-1 one -one just to mitigate the fact that it will be a 5-5 five -five next turn. So it looks like we're going to see the, the Ferryman being used here to bring back this novice. Maximum card draw, maximum minion count. Yeah, I like this. Getting so. to that Glacier Shard as soon as possible is also very important. All right. That was an ah. Arcan Intellect. Okay. Well, that well, changes can... the, the way this turn could pan out. I mean, now that you know the quest is going to get completed, you still have... The, the burden is still on you as a player to complete... Um, to completely shut down the, the Rogue's board. And I think, now that you picked up a second secret, the damage that is being dealt to this 5-5, five five, if you trade, and you do trade, is effectively mitigated by the fact that it's getting buffed again. Mm-hmm. But at the same so, time, if you, if you wanted... do that, you lose 5 damage because your opponent will have a charger with 5 attack. Because there's patches already in hand. We could see the Shadow Step. And that means that the Spellbender will give you some value. Denying the charger from recharging. The, the dagger is also not developed, right? So the Salsi deckhand is not attacking. Well, there's patches. Yeah. No, patches is fine, but the, the point is you can't charge with too many things. You've got very few chargers at your disposal. Before the stone tiles board, clearly, now things have changed a little bit, but uh, there were still only. There was still only one of them available to you. So he is not completing the quest. He's going to choose to to heal up the 2 3 with quest completion. Hmm. Spellbender plays around Counterspell, if it were Counterspell. You don't want to get that prep quest dealt with with Counterspell, so playing around is definitely correct. You're going to have to respect that 7-7 seven seven, though, you have no real choice. Yeah, but keeping it, you know, in check for a turn is most likely not. Because next turn, he is pushing for so much damage. The question is... Is it enough to kill immediately? Because now, there's a, a way for Sixto to kind of stall the board. Because this 7-7 seven seven doesn't look like much, but... It's actually a pretty big threat, because it keeps growing if another secret shows up. So suddenly oh. you're throwing two... Th oh my goodness! That's Blizzard. That's that Blizzard. Blizzard right here. But it's still not enough to kill his opponent next turn, right? Because he will have seven. I can count seven damage, eight damage, fourteen damage. He's still four damage short. So if he top takes a frost bolt, that's enough. But then the entire board needs to live an entire turn. That means that Ties cannot have uh, two charges. There's very little else that Sixo really has as options here. If this glacial shard gets bounced, then so be it. You know, the fact that he's putting down another 7-7 seven, seven next turn is a, a oh, pretty big deal. And that's the bouncer. That is indeed a bounce effect. I guess we can just develop the board. And bounce the glacial shard. Drink with me, friend. Keep that. Yeah. Keep that Arcanas in check for another turn. And just kill your opponent I'll next turn. Oh, well, you can. You should probably kill the Spellbender this turn, though. You just don't want to get any points of damage. At all. <laughs> South Sea Deckhand. is just a luxury here. You got so much damage output. For the mage to kill you, he'd have to get something ridiculous like... Eyes block into Fireball to your face. Into attack with a 1-1, which puts you at 11. Then he'd have to find another ice block with a ping into Pyroblast. I'm not saying this is impossible, I'm just saying it's pretty unlikely. Nope. But look at that. <laughs> he actually picked up the Frostbolt to kill his opponent. <laughs> That's pretty insane when you think about it. What to do? What to do? It's too bad it's not gonna get to do. What it needs to. On the flip side, I mean, if you're threat, if your opponent thinks he's threatened, he you know, still, if he doesn't have another charger or a way to, uh, to get the damage done, then you might be able to stabilize. In this case, though, we see that there's 20 on board and a five from a stone tusk boar. 
your new metagame overlord. Who would have thought that one day this guy would be in a tier 1 deck? And so sick so, even though he's favored in the matchup, will not be able to take the game. The quest rogue locks out a win, which is extremely important for Tice, as this deck yes. could have left him stranded. Definitely. So, and a very important win for, win for Tice. Now he's he's resting easy before the next game, because he knows he went went in with the worst possible matchups uh, matchups already, and now he's like, you know, you can say that um, the path is clear to victory. But still, even if he wins this match, he will face the same adversary almost the next uh, in the next match because Zalape also plays a very aggressive lineup. So that's not, of course, let's not count Six already out. He still has the chance to win two games against this Jade Druid, especially if he has an explosive opener uh, with multiple minions and buffs against a Druid. Uh, multiple minions, but no buffs yet to be seen. Yeah, okay, he marked the Lotus to make uh, to make a, a massive push here. But either way, you know, he's got a pretty decent opener. If the 1-1 one -one doesn't get dealt with because the opponent's busy while growing, for instance, um, then your Ravazor Runt is enabled. If it picks up plus 3 health, that's fantastic. It's a good target for Mark of Visharge. This Ravazor Runt has been incredible. Oh. And there you go. Ah. And plus 3 health. Or plus what? 1 and plus 1. No, I like the plus 3 health with Mark of Visharge. Prevents Wrath. Uh, really punishes you for, for surrendering that little bit of a board advantage you have. Mm -hmm. And so this this deals with Tar Creepers extremely well. You know, if he goes for Tar Creeper. If Xixo picks up a Mark of the Lotus right now, that will be the b most beautiful thing to behold. He has Living Mana, which is insane in this matchup. Especially Doesn't on Curve. Much better. Yeah. And now, Dice is looking for that swipe. He still has Wrath Hero Power to kill the Ravisor Runt. So you know he's got he's got a way to, to stabilize here. Hmm. No doubt. Second Wrath helps as well. But I feel like you need to use the hero power. That second rev will be very crucial in future future matches. Uh, sorry, future turns as well. Oh, he goes for the double rev. All right. Interesting. I guess what he wants to do with that is he wants to find those uh, behemoths as soon as possible. Maybe even just jade spirits to play something on the board. Those double Earthen Scales will help him stabilize, but he needs to get to play something on them first. So that's kind of awkward. Yeah, Tyus with... He's got about one turn to find something to do that is going to stabilize him. Otherwise, it just stands to get out of control. And that's what it looks like it's about to do here. He's got nothing. Nourish can draw. But Nourish drawing is not going to ramp you up to Primordial Drake. So this board is going to do whatever it has to. So, is your best chance to just ramp up and pray for a draw? I don't know, man. You're you're in trouble if you're Tice. You could ramp up for the hero power kill Bluegill, prevents Murloc's energy from being enabled, and then if you top deck that Primordial Drake, you can clean up whatever is left here if it doesn't get buffed. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. It's a really tough decision. But I guess you have to go for it, man. This is this sucks so much. He's, He's going for the draw. Draw, okay. Counting on those innervates. Counting on those innervates. Does not find them, but if he picks one up from the draw, though, that Drake is going to tear apart yeah. Sixel's board. Unless... But, but still, <laughs> Sixel has a way of re uh, sorry of refilling the board, even if he just doesn't buff this board right away. But in this case, this is like... Well, what can you do? Even if you play the Primordial Drake, it will soak up the board, but it will die in the process, and then just Kixo plays Living Man and has the same... Ties is facing the same fate. Yeah, looks like uh, Theseus NL is not going to find a way to clear this up. <sighs> I can't really think of a way for Ties to catch up. I mean, if you look at Wild Growth, it does nothing. I mean, it ramps you up to Primordial Drake, but then you're just dead. Um, this board's going to kill you. So your best chance is to get... As much health as you possibly can off of Earthen Scales. And hope that you pick up the Innervate for that Drake. But even then, is that... I don't even think that's enough. You'd have to get Fell Rage with Jade Spirit into, into even more. Alright. Does, does Sixo care about this Fandral? No, I don't Honestly. Think so. yeah. yeah. Even if that Fandral lives, like one Nourish was already used. 
I like this. I really like this. Max buffs, let's go. Yeah. Ignoring the Fandral, I think like, it's a, the best possible thing. Like, what 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 are the options that really hurt you when it comes to double options? Federal Rage is the only thing that comes to mind. That's the only thing. And even if it's Federal Rage, your minions still do use, you know, the damage for the basic for the next turn because it, 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 your opponent has to attack into it. Right. So double fell rage, sure, Tice might stand a chance, but one fell rage would not be sufficient in this spot. So it looks like Tice finds something useful, but it's not enough. Not on its own. Like there's no way for him to draw cards. There's no way for him to generate more than eight armor. And even if he kills the strongest minion on the board, there is still more than lethal on, on the side of six oh. Yeah. Um Gaddis and Auctioneer into Jade Idol, into Innervate, into Innervate into nice. eh, there's nothing left that's it gg yeah. not even a hint of a chance and tice is simply going to concede it over to the druid so now six to left with his mage against this druid we've seen this scenario repeat over and over secret mage is extremely good against jay druid but uh, there have been many upsets it seems like Sixto's deck is it's not finding enough secrets well he doesn't play them like you know like other players he doesn't play as many of them as other other players, only four and two are chronologies. Although in most situations, you just need one, right, to get it, to go all, and that's enough. In this case, he already picks up a chronologist, so that's that's beautiful. And a crystal runner. So that crystal runner is a four mana five five in this situation, which is great against droids in general. So this is a great opener for Sixo because he has two two drops. If he didn't have that second two drop, this opener would probably be too slow mm -hmm. to fight off against the current curve that Tice is putting together. You know, he's got the Fandral, uh, potentially finds another way to, you know, another play like Jade Spirit. So this could have been extremely awkward uh, for Sixo had he not found that Apprentice and the Archaeologist together. However, when you pair them. They do a lot of uh, a lot of great work. So here I have no doubt we're going to see that fireball come out as unpleasant as it might be. You can't let a nourish land after the Fandral, so you're going to have to slow yeah, down a little bit. No. But then you get to play Secret Secret on turn four, which protects you against swipes and whatnot. <laughs> hey, Tice, what's wow. up? <laughs> uh, that spells disaster if you see something like that. Especially if your opponent will have Mirror Entity in, in the upcoming turn. I mean, like, when you see secrets, you just freak out, honestly. Like, whatever yeah. they are, you're just freaking out at that stage. So, the there... fact that Tice didn't play a single, single card on turn 5, that means that he has only creatures that cost more, because he would have played Nourish, he would have played... Uh, Rev. He would have played Swipe. He would have played Jade Blossom. Bell he would have played, would have played everything. Wild Grove. <laughs> everything would have been uh, played. Now, No Mirror Entity is going to make Tice pretty happy, I imagine, because now the tempo of a 3 6 is not going to be you know, slapped in his face. And that is something that really could have backfired had that happened. Now, 6 0 could fish for a Frost Bolt to clean up the 3 6 with the Apprentice. From the Arcane Intellect, there's a possibility of a Glyph into a Secret for zero, into Cabal Crystal Runner for zero. Oh, there we oh. go. Apprentice into Glyph into Secret into Crystal Runner. That's a thing. Mirror Entity would be the best, definitely. Let's see what he will get. I think so, right? Well, you can play second Sosa's Apprentice. No, you can't, because then... No, 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 you can't. If you do that and you don't get a secret, then you can't play Crystal Runner. So well, you'd have to get yeah, you'd have to get a secret that you don't already have. So it can't be Spellbender and it can't be Counter Spell. So the safest way is to start with Glyph without the second Apprentice. Clearly, hmm. um, Forbidden Flame is a decent. It's a clear on one minion basically. I like I like Nova. Honestly, I'm biased towards Nova. I'd play that Crystal Runner plus a zero cost Nova every day. Yeah, it's decent as well. Ruid. I mean, you're guaranteeing a not... Firelands Portal in the next turn, right, for six? Yeah, but I'm not sure if, if the Frost Nova this turn. I mean, you can gain so much tempo in the upcoming turns as well. Although, you lose your board. So that's definitely awkward. Now, that Spellbender can eat up Earth and Scales, buffing that's it up to sick. a 2-4. <laughs> that is so sick. Uh, 
Uh, but the druid enough. still gets the HP, so that's something. I mean the armor, so Go not the HP. It's, uh, it's kind of weird that Ties didn't go for the Elfin Scales. He probably assumes they're Spellbender because he didn't see Entity and didn't yeah, see... Yeah, but, but if there's Counter Spell, he wants to do something before he plays Nourish. And the only thing that he would like to do before that would be Innervate or Elfin Scales. At the same time, getting that health buff at some point in the game after you actually bait out that, um, that Counter Spell or Spellbender in that situation means more. So maybe he's thinking about stabilizing in the late game uh, with that Elfin Scales in, in, that, in this situation. I wonder. Uh, maybe floating the one mana. It's really just a payoff, right? As you said, like the Spellbender represents too much to deal with in terms of minion count, so... It's not really something you can handle. I, I really, really like Sixo's board state and just hand state in general. It's tough to navigate because you want to do like 10 things at once. Um, which is just kind of tricky. Um, but since you know you're protected against two spells, you've got Spellbender and your counter spell. Basically, Swipe can't hit. Even if they play two swipes, if they play Earthen Scale Swipe, it doesn't matter. Like, just there's nothing that's gonna happen here. Mm hmm. Now we're gonna oh. get that Drake value. That Six Drake value right is right into sick. it. That is like, so, oh my god, good. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly, good. How do you win just from played that right into this it. point? <laughs> you need to, what? Firelands portal your opponent's face, Firelands portal your opponent's face. You kill the drag, get a doom guard. Yeah, that, that's, how, that's how, what he did uh, go for. And I like it because I feel like this is the only way you can win the game from now on. Uh, Sixo played really hard into the uh, the Drake because he could have gone for five minutes portal for six on the three six, then you know attack with a two three, get the five drop anyway, have the five five left over. Sure, it dies to Aya, but then the Drake doesn't completely wreck you. So there were ways to slow down a little bit by having an extra five drop. But if he was counting on getting those fireland portals to face, then it's a bit of a different story. He's got counter spell, so he assumes he can negate health gain from armor, and he's got spellbender to eat up the, the earthen scales. But that's not gonna happen because. Tice will bait out the counter spell first with the Jade Blossom. Still draws a card. Yeah. Counter and now can hits. also bait out the the Spellbender with the swipe as well for the next turn. So the Elfin Scale is there and the burn plan will go away. Which is kind of unfortunate for Xixo, but he paid the price for being greedy. Well, let's see what Sixo can pick up here. There's got to be a card that, that helps out. In this case, Medea's Valley is actually substantial uh, as it gives him a little bit more reach. The issue is he knows for a fact he's probably going to be dead to Feral Rage or uh, or swipe to his face next turn since he doesn't have an Ice Block set up. This is a Spellbender. Mm -hmm. So he has to handle the board in some fashion. I wonder. It's kind of complicated, really. I mean, with 9 on board and 4 from Feral Rage or swipe, he's going to have to kill more than one minion. And he can't play Firelands Portal to the face of the stun and Pink Aya. That would be probably the the way to play to win this game. But in this case, like there's no way you can do that. Play to win is Leroy Doomguard. Just you gotta get a Firelands RNG a little bit or get some kind of Earth Elemental, Psychotron, you know, something to stall what's coming up while killing a minion at the same time. So you have to get quite fortunate in this case. But then you file and portal the, the Primordial Drake, right? Or the Gadgetan, really. Uh, at the end of the day, it's... Well, if you want to put more damage the in the face, you need to go for Drake, file and portal. If you want right. to go for the Leroy or, um, you know, Doomguard. In this yeah, the Doomguard, for sure. Is Either you get a big taunt or a charger. I think taunts are more likely. In this case, though, Sixo putting himself into block pop range if Swipe or Fell Rage is present. Ooh. All right, well, that gives another option for for Thais. He can actually go for the swipe this turn as well, uh, which is helpful, even if it's a Spellbender. I mean, he, he assumes most likely that this is a Ice Block, but he knows it might be a Spellbender. So if he goes for the Gadgetan swipe this turn, he kills the Spellbender, damages the Arcanist, which he can then trade with um, with the Primordial Drake, and then kill 
uh, the Vile Spine Slayer with uh, with Aya, and he still le- he's still left with one Taunt and a Jade Golem, and an Auctioneer on the board as well, which we know that was a it was a problematic card for uh, for Xyx to deal with. Oh, looks like Tys has found the line that he wants to commit to, and it and might. He wants to check what. He just wants to check if it's ice block then in this situation. Yeah, and honestly, I don't fault him. If it is ice block, he just takes the series and knocks out 6 0, which is going to be sent home. And Tys wow. will advance once again to fight off against Zalay. I don't want to be a doomsayer here, but we saw that play out earlier, and Tys got completely rolled over. Yeah, but well played by Tys. He didn't. Like, th- that's super interesting to see because um, if that would be an ice block, what this this play do is it actually allows Xixxer to maybe climb back. Because then he can get value out of his minions, right? But at the same time, if it's ice block... Actually, no, because he had Earth and Scales. So if he plays he swipe... He had Earth and get the armor gain yeah, afterwards so, and survive. So he can so. get the life after the attack. If it's an ice block, gets more guaranteed to live the next turn. Then his opponent's at 1 HP and you kill it with hero power. So that was actually the best line of play. And that turn, and Tides recognized that and won the game. Kudos to him. Yeah, also very good read too. Like, the odds of it being Spellbender are higher. When you see your opponent go all in on the board, playing into Drake, you're thinking, this guy's not even afraid of swipe, so maybe he's got Spellbender and assumes that his board is safe, regardless of what happens. So Dice played very well, and he's going to find himself in the finals of the last chance qualifier. That's going to be coming up after a short break, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Zalay versus Tejas NL.